good. So, welcome everybody, both online and on site. It's a great pleasure for us to welcome you for this edition of the ICMP in Geneva, hybrid version. For today, for the opening ceremony, we'll have a few speakers presenting you um, the ICMP. The first speaker today will be Benjamin Schlein from the co-chair co of the local organizing committee. Of course. Can you activate the slides? Cool. Okay. Okay, so hello. So speaking on behalf of the local organizing committee, I would like to welcome everybody here at the 20th International Congress on Mathematical Physics. I would like to uh, welcome uh, on-site participants who are here in Geneva, and I would also like to welcome all our online participants around the world. So this is the second ICMP that is held in Switzerland. The first one was uh, 42 years ago, in 1979, in Lausanne. So as you see, Switzerland has a long tradition in mathematical physics in Lausanne, but of course also in other places like in Zurich, and of course here in Geneva. So this tradition led in 2014 to the, uh, to the um, formation of the NCCR. So this is the local organizing committee, which I... Okay, so, so it led to the formation of the NCCR uh, Swiss map, which is a, a research a network at the crossroad between mathematics and theoretical physics. So uh, Swiss map is the main sponsor of uh, uh, this uh, Congress, and uh, it is... Uh, through its uh, financial support and from the uh, huge uh, uh, effort of the SwissMap team, team, who did uh, most of the work for the preparation of this event, that we are able to have this Congress here in Geneva. Good. So this is, uh, 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 apart from uh, uh, SwissMap, I would also like to acknowledge uh, the general support of the uh, other sponsor of this uh, Congress. So let me mention the Swiss Confederation, the Canton of Geneva, the Fonda General d'Université, the uh, Société Académique de Genève, the Faculty of Science and the Rectorate of the University of Geneva, the Foundation Dudley Wright, G Research, the Journal of Mathematical Physics, and IOP Publishing. This is, of course, a uh, special Congress. So in the last uh, one and a half year, the global pandemic affected all our life, and of course, it also affected the organization of this uh, event. So uh, in particular, it forced us to switch to a hybrid format, because at least we, so we, which allows us to have speakers and participants who currently cannot travel to Geneva. So while we are sorry uh, that nobody can be here in Geneva, at least we have, uh, we, we are able to reach a larger number of members of our community. From a technical point of view, however, you can imagine uh, this hybrid format uh, presented new challenges, and we hope and we are confident that uh, everything will, will run smoothly, and of course we also count on your patience and understanding if we will encounter some technical problems. <laughs> okay, so... Um, we hope that everybody is going to enjoy the scientific program which has been put together by the International Scientific Committee. Uh, for me, I will certainly looking forward to the next week of interesting and inspiring talks in mathematical physics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benjamin. As you may know, the ICMP is organized by the International Association of Mathematical Physics, whose president, Bruno Nartogalle, will now say a few words. Thank you, Elise. So, let that advance. Here we go. I'd like to welcome all of you on behalf of the International Association of Mathematical Physics, all of you here in the room and also out there online. For many of us, uh, this is one of the first, if not the first conference that we are able to attend in person since uh, the beginning of the pandemic. It feels a little strange, uh, but also definitely very exciting. 
In the past few days, I attended the Young Researchers Symposium, which was very well attended, mostly by researchers much younger than me. I must say the hybrid format worked flawlessly, and the lecture series were top-notch. I would like to commend the conference chairs, Anton Alexeyev and Benjamin Schlein, for a successful reformatting of the meeting in hybrid mode. It required courage, for sure, and a good dose of optimism to do this. And of course, also, it required the excellent work of Swiss MAP staff, led by scientific director Elisa Raphael, as well as Kioni for the technical execution. I hope I'm not jinxing the main event by heaping praise on what they have already accomplished with the YRS. In an indirect way, the success of this somewhat experimental endeavor also relies on the many among you who have worked creatively to keep our community connected throughout the pandemic. The flourishing online seminars were the revelation of what otherwise certainly are challenging times. That said, I'm very much looking forward to participate in person this week. We have a fantastic scientific program ahead of us. And I would like to thank uh, Robert Zeiringer, past president of IEMP, and the International Scientific Committee, chaired by Herbert Sporn, for putting the program together. And of course, all of you for showing up as speakers and audience in person and online. Have a great conference. The organization of this conference would not have been possible without the support of the University of Geneva. And so I'm happy to let Jérôme Lacour, Dean of the Faculty of Sciences, on behalf of the University of Geneva, say a few words. Thank you, Elise. Um, <clears throat> Monsieur le Conseiller d'État, uh, Mr. President and members of the International Association of Math Mathematical Physics, members of the International, International Scientific Committee of ICMP, dear delegates um, and visitors, it's a true pleasure, as it was said already like a few minutes ago, to welcome all of you to the 20th International Congress on Mathematical Physics occurring this week in Geneva. After a long pause to major conferences due to the current and, uh, and still global COVID-19 situation, it's so nice to see a room, to see so many of you partici participating, I would say half uh, or mainly in an in in-person symposium. While we had, of course, the possibility during like a year, year and a half to teach online, to interact together through Zoom, to discuss project and science via Teams, we owe this in part, and this is the first connection to Geneva, to Tim Berners-Lee, a British researcher who invented the web at CERN in 1989, and we should remember this. Yet, when it comes to imagination and creativity, I believe that nothing replaces the one-to-one -one or the one-to-many experience of a colloquium to share and enrich you know, each other's knowledge, to meet experts and friends, and to grow and expand, of course, its scientific network. Then, to my mind, it's quite logical to start, actually, science conferences again in the international Geneva and in Switzerland as a whole, who enjoys a rather small country, five universities and research institutions in the top 100, for instance, of the Shanghai ranking. For the University of Geneva, this very favorable situation is due to its scientific position, recognized at the international level, and Mathematics plays a key role for this reputation uh, due to the presence of wonderful colleagues that we all know uh, who were there as a PhD, who are here as colleagues. And I may mention a few, but there are so many that I, I will not actually, they are only mentioning a few names. So what is very important is all of them have built their colleagues through really international collaborations. And there, as you may know, in terms of international and European collaboration since a few weeks, Switzerland is considered as a non-associated country with respect to Horizon uh, Europe. The EU framework program for research and innovation in 2021-2027, the largest research and innovation funding program in the world. So for the University of Geneva and all Swiss universities, institutions for that matter, Switzerland should be associated to Horizon Europe. 
This is important for the academic world, but also for companies, large and small, and beyond that, for maintaining the quality of life that we enjoy. In fact, for Switzerland and Swiss universities, Horizon Europe is not just about research per se. Research is a mean to the end to improve okay, the lives of all people. Thanks to research, fundamental and applied, solutions can be found for the world's urgent problem, for instance, in the areas of health okay, or the environment, if only. International scientific cooperation is a prerequisite for excellence and for, for in fundamental sciences and innovation. Your presence here today is a proof of it. Let's celebrate the spirit of international openness and collaboration at the beginning and during all the 20th International Congress of Mathematical, Mathematical Physics. I wish you a wonderful conference. If I see by the program, this will be the case. But I also wish you to enjoy not only the wonderful scientific program, but also the city and the surroundings of Geneva, if time and weather permits. I will finish by thanking, of course, all the members of the local committee, uh, organizing committee who made this organization of this conference possible, from the student helpers to the chairs of the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Jérôme. So as Jérôme mentioned, we hope you will be able to enjoy a bit of the sights of Geneva. And we are honored today to have among us the Vice President of the Council of State of Geneva, Mauro Poggia, who would like to say a few words. Those words will be in French. So for you on-site attendees, you'll notice in front of you, most of you normally, there should be a helmet, together with, on the black um, microphone, on the left to the two pluses, you should be able to select, select the language. English should be available as the first choice. So I hope you'll be able to enjoy this speech. Thank you very much. Messieurs, gentlemen, presidents of the local organizing committee of the 20th uh, ICMP, Mr. President of the International Association of Physics, uh, Mathematical Physics, and the Dean of the University of Geneva, ladies and gentlemen, experts of uh, major institutions, ladies and gentlemen, I am especially happy in the name of the Council of State of Geneva, of the Canton Republic of Geneva, of taking part in the opening of this eminent uh, prestige, of this prestigious uh, event uh, with the Nobel Prize winner. I'd like to thank the International Association of Physics of having chosen Geneva for its 20th Congress. I would also like to thank the National uh, Swiss Map Research Center which has organized this event. The Canton is very happy to once again being able to bring together so many eminent personalities after 18 months of health crisis. Because of the pandemic, the Congress has been entirely revisited. For the first time, it is taking place in a hybrid version with physical presence and by internet. An enormous challenge for the organizers and I would like to thank uh, Swiss Map for this challenge which has been taken on board. The Canton of Geneva is proud to receive such an eminent panel of individuals. Geneva is known for its international presence and is shining even more today. Uh, Switzerland and Geneva are also a land of excellence in the field of sciences. Everyone knows Michel Mayor, who obtained the Nobel Prize of Physics in 2019 with DJ Kelo. I would also like to mention the National Research Center Swiss Map, which since 2014 is a pole of excellence for the meeting of mathematics and physics. A Swiss Map has amongst its partner institutions the Lausanne Polytechnic, CERN, universities of Zurich, Basel, Bern, and Fribourg. And Geneva is proud of the mathematical and physical tradition of its university. Everyone here present knows the name of Gabriel Kramer, having heard this in linear algebra. But do you know that he was one of the first professors of mathematics at the University of Geneva 
when it was called Academy of Geneva. Gabriel Kramer was the symbol of the scientific renewal in Geneva at the beginning of the 18th century. More recently, and Stuckelberg, physicist and mathematician Georges de Ram and Michel Kerver, made Geneva one of the main world centers of mathematics. The Canton of Geneva also has one of the speakers of the young uh, researchers, Martin Rurer, who obtained his doctorate in physics in Geneva and received the Fields Medal, the most eminent distinction in mathematics. These examples show that your two disciplines, physics and mathematics, go hand in hand and that their interaction is fruitful and represent a tremendous potential. I would also like to say as a head of the Council of State that the pandemic has impacted the academic institutes and contacts between researchers. Recent progress in the field of science shows to what extent research and collaboration are vital, irrespective of the discipline. This 20th International Congress of Mathematical Physics, organized the first time as a hybrid, hybrid version, is also a tremendous opportunity to bring together international experts and of presenting the most recent progress in research. There's also a major opportunity for many young researchers who have been impacted by the health crisis of being able to interact with their peers. In conclusion, allow me once again to reiterate my thanks for the choice of Geneva for the hosting of this uh, uh, Congress. And I would like to wish all participants, those who are physically here or those who are joining us uh, remotely, fruitful exchanges. And for those who have come to Geneva, I can but invite you to discover, in your free time, our wonderful canton. Bravo, thank you, and good luck. Thank you very much for being among us this morning. Our next speaker is someone you've already heard this morning. It's Bruno Nartagele, who will this time be doing the announcement of the Henri Poincaré Prize winners. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. So the Henri Poincaré Prize, sponsored by the Daniel Jagelnitzer Foundation, was created in 1997 to recognize outstanding contributions in mathematical physics and contributions which lay the groundwork for novel developments in this broad field. The prize was also created to recognize and support young people of exceptional promise who have already made outstanding contributions to the field of mathematical physics. The prize is awarded every three years at the International Congress of Mathematical Physics. The Executive Committee of the International Association of Mathematical Physics appoints the Selection Committee, which for this edition, the ninth, consisted of Edward Witten, Robert Zeiringer, Jean-Pierre Ekman, Mihalis da Fermas, and Committee Chair Michael Eisenman. It was an initiative of Vincent Rivasso to present the Henri Poiré Christ winners, not just with a monetary award, but also with a piece of art to commemorate their accomplishments. So this sculpture, Anthony, by Reinhard Fischarek, will be uh, engraved with the names of the winners and the name of the sponsor, the Daniel Diagonitzer Foundation, uh, to commemorate their accomplishments. I do not have the sculptures here, unfortunately. Um, they will be shipped directly to the winners, some of whom are, in any case, not able to attend the ceremony in person. Okay, let's uh, go to the winners. Rodney James Baxter is awarded the 2021 Henri Poincaré Prize for groundbreaking contributions to the study of exactly solvable models in statistical mechanics. 
which have led to and continue to inspire profound developments across a broad spectrum of mathematics and physics. So I believe Rodney is online. Can you hear me? Did Laudatio. Yes, Rodney, we can hear you. Good. Um, Good. Well, thank you very much. So that's a Bruno. That's a, that's a great honor to be get this get the the prize. And uh, I thank I certainly thank the selection committee for it. And also my sponsors, uh, Vladimir Bajanov, Murray Bachelor, and Rainel Crystal who put my name forward, but I didn't know anything about it until I was told I got it, which is a nice way to, for things to happen. So thank you very much indeed. The Laudatio for Rodney Baxter will be delivered by Vladimir Bazanov from Australian National University. And he should be online. Hi. Vladimir, you're it's, here. Yes. 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 Do you hear me? We do. It's uh, an honor and tremendous pleasure for me to say a few words or about Rodney Baxter's work on this occasion for his richly deserved Henri Poincaré Prize in Mathematical Physics. Rodney Baxter's name is firmly associated with the most elegant mathematical discoveries for at least two generations of theoretical physicists and mathematicians. Rodney graduated from Trinity College, Cambridge, in 1961 and received his PhD from the Australian National University, ANU, in 1964. When, after positions at ANU and MIT, he's got a tenured positions, position at ANU. Interestingly, Rodney, in his recent autobiography, calls himself an accidental academic. Let me read the quote. For the first 24 years of my life, I had no intention of becoming an academic. Rather, I expected to earn my living as an employee of some large company, such as the Iraq Petroleum Company, that I joined in 1964 as a reservoir engineer. However, things panned out differently, and I'm very happy that they did. I made a career as a mathematical physics physicist, working on simple model for statistical mechanical systems, asking questions akin to why does water boil or why does it freeze? And I've been able to make some contribution to the subject. Well, I must add, we are all happy that Rodney did become an academic. I first met Rodney in person in 1980 nine, more than 30 years ago, during the special year in mathematical physics problem, program organized by Neil Trudinger's Center for Mathematical Analysis at the Australian National University. That was the start of my collaboration with Rodney in the area of lattice model which lasted for many years. Of course, previously during the eighties, I and many of my colleagues in Russia had studied Rodney Baxter's work. A typical state after such studies is a feeling of absolute and complete admiration of the beauty and sophistication of his mathematical result. The effect is so strong that it is not unusual that at international conferences, completely unknown to me, people come and ask, you are working at the ANU. Have you seen Professor Baxter? 
clearly indicating that that would be a notable event in their life. Baxter's work has involved solving highly non-trivial mathematical problems in the most brilliant way. In 1971, Baxter solved the eight vertex model of uh, the two-dimensional on the two-dimensional lattice by inventing methods of such power and generality that the course of research in statistical mechanics was, per was permanently altered. In the year 2000, we have an international conference in Canberra, which was entitled The Baxter Revolution in Mathematical Physics to emphasize the broad impact of Baxter's pioneering work in many branches of physics and mathematics. Since then, the scope of new application of Baxter's work is only rapidly increasing. To date, it has completely revolutionized many areas of modern mathematics including algebra, topology, geometry, and mathematical analysis. In physics, there are spectacular, spectacular applications in statistical mechanics and condensed metaphysics, in quantum field theory, and most recently in string theory and high energy physics. This revolution originates in Baxter's brilliant inventions of what are now called the young Baxter equation, the corner transfer matrix, the commuting transfer matrices and functional equations for the eigenvalues. In his pioneering paper on the hard hexagon model, Baxter has discovered the connections with the Roger Ramanujan identities, which besides the exact results for expectation values has led to a dual boson fermion description for lattice model. Baxter's work has also led to the invention of quantum groups by Dreamfield and Jimpa, who have been honored by, for their work by Fields Medal for Dreamfield in 1990 and the Wigner Medal for Jimpa in 2010. The discovery of not invariants by Jones, who, were, who was honored by the Fields Medal in 1990. The development by Sklanin, Tehtajan, and Fadeev uh, of the powerful quantum inverse scattering method for solving models of statistical mechanics and quantum field theory. And most recently, the connection of gauge string theory uh, and two dimensional integrable system by Moldasena, uh, Minaham Zaremba, Castello Witten, and Yamazaki, and many others. Baxter's work has inspired many other developments by researchers all around the world, including Andrews, Ao Young, McCoy, Pierre, and Tracy in the USA, Belavin, Fatev, Zamolodchikov, Karepin, Kirillov, Smirnov, and Risha Tikhin in Russia, Miva and Jimba in Japan, Maye, Pasquier, and Salor in France, Pearson, Forrester in Australia, Mussarda in Italy, among others, of that generation. Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. He was referring to Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. There is no doubt that Professor Baxter is the giant who has brought the torch of mathematical physics into the 21st century. Rephrasing Newton, I would say, we are able to see further because of the outstanding work of Professor Baxter. Please join me to congratulate Professor Baxter on the award of Henri Poincaré Prize in Mathematical Physics. Wonderful. Next up, um, oh, you, you almost jumped. Dimitrios Christodoulou is awarded the 2021 Ari Poincaré Prize for path-breaking contributions to the mathematical understanding of the Einstein equations, including fundamental results on black hole formation 
and the discovery of a nonlinear memory effect in the theory of gravitational radiation. And for introducing a powerful geometric point of view for the problem of shock formation for compressible fluids. Congratulations. Say a word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, I would like to say that that I first uh, studied physics, and uh, I wrote my first paper on the in physics uh, about 51 years ago, and I received my PhD more than 50 years ago in physics. But uh, later on, I came to the realization that since uh, the objective of our whole community is the mathematical description of physical phenomena, I turned to the study of mathematics, which was my knowledge at that time was, was quite uh, meager. And uh, when one thing led to another, uh, after uh, my studies, I realized that uh, the methods that are in our possession, the mathematical methods, are not adequate to solve the most important physical problems. And therefore, I devoted myself to the further development of these methods or to the discovery of new methods. And uh, I think that um, after about uh, 45 years in mathematical physics, uh, I have come to, to this point to which which I consider a great honor because, of course, because of uh, the mathematical physics community which gave me the honor, but also I should say that always Henri Poincaré was my role model. Uh, to him, I looked for inspiration. In his works, I looked for inspiration. Thank you very much. The 2021 Ari Parekra is awarded to Yoshiko Ogata for groundbreaking work on the mathematical theory of quantum spin systems, ranging from the formulation of Anzager reciprocity relations to innovative contributions to the theory of matrix product states and of symmetry protected topological phases of infinite quantum spin systems. The Ladasio will be delivered by Heltasaki. Um, ah, Yoshiko, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't actually know that I have to say something, but... Uh, needless to say, this is our greatest honor, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone uh, who supported me throughout my career as a researcher, including uh, Yasu Kawahigashi, Bruno Nahtegel, and Hartasaki, and Takamatsui, and Kroda Rempire. Thank you very much. Sorry for jumping ahead. Here is Hal. It is my great pleasure and honor to briefly discuss Yoshiko Ogata's research accomplishments. Yoshiko received her PhD from the University of Tokyo, where she was a physics major. She was a postdoc at the University of Marseille and UC Davis, and then joined Kyushu University as a faculty member. In 2009, she moved to the Department of Mathematics of the University of Tokyo, where she is now a full professor. Yoshiko has been working on problems in quantum many body systems by using the operator algebraic formulation. She has solved and is solving a variety of the most difficult problems in physics that involve infinite degrees of freedom by developing precise, sometimes deep mathematical tools. Let me discuss some examples. With Voikan Jaksik and Claude Alan Pillet, 
Yoshiko studied the general problem of non-equilibrium steady states and justified the linear response theory, especially the Onsago reciprocal relations. The Onsago relations are still among the most essential results in non-equilibrium physics. And I would say that this is a fundamental contribution to a traditional problem in physics. In the field of quantum spin system, Yoshiko has made several fundamental contributions on problems that are fashionable even in the physics community. To explain her contributions, I'd like to recall Duncan Haldane's famous discovery, uh, which brought him the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics. It's about low energy properties of the anti-ferromagnetic Heisenberg chain with this Hamiltonian. Haldane conjectured that when and only when the spin quantum number s is an integer, this model has a unique gapped ground state, namely a unique ground state accompanied by a non-zero energy gap immediately above the ground state energy. This conjecture has not yet been solved, but it was proved that a similar Hamiltonian uh, with spin one has a unique gap ground state, which is believed to be qualitatively similar to, similar to the ground state of the original Heisenberg chain. But it is also easy to write down a model that has a unique gap ground state for a trivial reason. For example, the spin one chain with this Hamiltonian clearly has a unique gap ground state, which is this simple tensor product. It is then natural to ask whether these two ground states are smoothly connected. To be precise, we say that the models with H0 and H1 are smoothly connected if there exists a family of Hamiltonians with a unique gapped ground state that smoothly interpolates between them. It was conjectured by Chen, Gu, and Wen in 2011 that H0 and H1 are indeed smoothly connected if one is allowed to use any short range Hamiltonian to interpolate between them. This fact is now known rigorously. It follows, for example, from Yoshiko's extensive classification theory of matrix product states published in 2016 and 2017 as a trilogy in communications in mathematical physics. But this is not the end of the story. Recall that both H0 and H1 have time reversal symmetry that is invariant under this transformation. It was conjectured by Gu and Wen in 2009 that if we require interpolating Hamiltonians to also possess time reversal symmetry, then H0 and H1 are never connected smoothly. In this case, the models with H0 and H1 are said to belong to different symmetry protected topological phases. This is indeed the fact that Yoshiko proved in her ground, groundbreaking paper appeared in 2018 and published in CMP last year. In this and the following paper published this year in CMP, Yoshiko defined indices for a unique gapped ground state of a spin chain with certain symmetry. The indices take value in the second group cohomology of the symmetry group and are proved to provide classification of symmetry protected topological phases. We should note that such indices were already defined by Paul Turner, Balk, and Oshikawa back in 2010, but only for a limited class of states, namely injective matrix product states, while Yoshiko's index theories cover an arbitrary unique gapped ground state. In this sense, we can say that Yoshiko has completed the theory of symmetry protected topological phases in quantum spin chains. It is simply amazing that fully rigorous and general mathematical theory was developed only nine years after the original heuristic proposal. But this is not yet the end of the story. Yoshiko never stops. She has already completed the theory of symmetry protected topological phases of two dimensional quantum spin system, as we can hear from her in the next session. I cannot help discussing one more work of Yoshiko's, which is my favorite and Yoshiko's favorite too, I hear. Suppose that there, there are n sequences for Hermitian matrices, which commute with each other asymptotically like this. We then ask whether the sequences of matrices can be approximated by sequences of mutually commuting Hermitian matrices Y like this. 
This is indeed a famous classical problem, and it is well known that such commuting approximations do not exist in general. In her paper in 2013, published in Journal of Functional Analysis, Yoshiko proved that commuting approximations always exist if the original non-commuting matrices are taken as the densities of extensive quantities of a quantum spin chain. This result is natural for physical physicists since thermodynamics is a classical theory where all quantities commute. And these densities are precisely thermodynamic objects. To prove the theorem, Yoshiko studies projections onto the spaces where these extensive quantities take almost constant values, and then estimates the ranks of the projections by means of the entropy functions. This estimate with an operator algebraic technique enables her to construct the desired set of commuting matrices. I would say that the proof is an example of ideal combination of ideas from statistical mechanics and techniques from operator algebra. For me, it was a truly exciting experience to witness rapid progress in mathematical physics made by Yoshiko. But I'm sure that this is far from the end. I'm looking forward to many more new beautiful insights from Yoshiko. I would like to end by congratulating Yoshiko on this occasion of her winning the Only Poincaré Prize. Ogata-san, omedetou gozaimasu. That was Altasaki from Gakushin University. Jan Philip Solove is awarded the 2021 Henri Poincaré Prize for outstanding contributions to the analysis of quantum anybody problems, ranging from the electronic structure of large atoms to the Li Huang Yang asymptotics of the ground state energy of dilute Bose gases. Thank you very much. It's a great honor uh, to receive the Henri Poincaré Prize. So I want to thank the committee and I want to thank you, the community, for uh, giving me this honor. And it's actually a particularly great honor to have my name listed with all the pioneers that have received this prize previously, including the pioneers that have received it this year. Thanks a lot. The Laudatio will be delivered by Søren Fournay from Aris University, who is online. Thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to present to you Jan-Philippe Solovey, who receives the Henri Poincaré Prize 2021, with the citation that you've just heard, for outstanding contributions to the analysis of quantum many-body problems, ranging from the electronic structure of large atoms to the Li-Wang-Yang asymptotics of the ground state energy of dilute Bose gases. Jan Philipp received his PhD from Princeton University in 89 with Elliot Lieb as advisor and with a thesis entitled Universality in the Thomas Fermi von Weizsäcker model of atoms and molecules. At that time, the study of large atoms was one of the central questions in mathematical physics. To set the stage, the famous 2C plus 1 bound of Lieb had just appeared in 84, and the papers of Hughes and by Seidentop and Weikart on the Scott correction must have been written up during then Philip's type, time as a graduate student, just to mention some of the very important developments in the area at the time. It appears clear that Jan Philip got strongly motivated for settling the important question of the maximum possible ionization of an isolated non-relativistic atom while in Princeton. The ionization conjecture states that this ionization, um, so that is the maximum number of electrons that can be bound to the nucleus minus the nucleus, nuclear charge, is bounded by a universal constant 
which is independent of the nuclear charge. It is one of the main achievements of Jan Philipp to have proved this conjecture in the Hartree Fock model, first in 91 in a reduced Hartree Fock model, and then later in 2003 in the full Hartree Fock theory of atoms. The conjecture for the full quantum mechanical many body problem actually remains open, but I'm quite convinced that Jan Philipp has not yet given up on proving it. The subjects of semi-classical analysis Semiclassical analysis, electronic structure, and stability of matter are strongly intertwined, as we all know. Jan Philipp has made important contributions to them all. Let me here only briefly mention some of them. One highlight is the influential works joined with uh, Lieb and Ingwersen on semiclassical analysis and magnetic Thomas Fermi theory in the presence of strong magnetic fields. Also of fundamental importance is the beautiful proof with Lieb and Laws of stability of matter with magnetic fields. Together with Erdős, he proved strong Lipchian um, type inequalities with variable magnetic fields and studied the structure of magnetic zero modes. Also, the proof with Spitzer and Sörensen of the Scott correction for a model of an atom, including some relativistic effects, deserves mentioning. Together with Erdős and myself, he proved semi-classical results for large atoms, including the Scott correction, in a model with self-generated magnetic fields. It is also important here to mention the rigorous derivation in 2012 with Frank, Heinzel, and Seiringer of the ginzburg landau theory of superconductivity from the underlying BCS theory. Another highlight in the list of scientific achievements of Jan Philipp is the proof of the Li Wang Yang term in the ground state energy of dilute Bose gases. The road, the road to this proof is also long and shows a determination and a willingness to work hard and develop the necessary tools along the way. An early milestone is the proof joined with Elliot Lieb of the formula for the ground state energy in the one and two component Bose fluid in the large density limit in 2001 and 2004. In these works, it is used that a simple completion of the square version of Bogolyubov's diagonalization of quadratic Hamiltonians is a sufficient and robust tools, tool for lower bounds. Also, localization techniques that do not disturb the condensate are developed. These tools were then sharpened over the years. Let me mention in passing uh, the strongly influential lecture notes from Jan Philipp's course on many body quantum mechanics um, that were written up and presented during his semester as a Mercator guest professor at the LMU Munich in 2007. Our final joint proof in 2020 of the Li Wang Yang correction terms of the ground state energy of dilute Bose gases in the thermodynamic limit combines versions of these techniques with another completion of the square argument to take care of the correlation terms between excited pairs and the gas. This is actually an argument that has its roots in a paper that he wrote with Jan Michele Graf back in 1994, as well as the understanding that the remaining terms not present in Bogolyubov's calculation effectively can cancel each other out. In 95, I started as a graduate student with Jan Philipp, who had just returned to Denmark from the US. My choice of advisor was only based on the suggestion of a trusted professor. This leap of faith has turned out to be one of the best decisions in my life. As the many postdocs and graduate students who have had the luck to work with Jan Philipp can testify, he's a wonderful mentor and a generous and insightful scientist who is never satisfied with the easy partial solution, but aims for real progress and understanding. This generosity and insight has benefited a large part of a generation of mathematical physicists, in particular in Europe, starting in the 90s with European research networks, where Jan Philipp was an important participant, and more recently with members and visitors to his group, supported by the ESC and later by the QMAS Center, funded by the Willem Foundation. I'm convinced that I speak on behalf of all these mathematical physicists when I take this occasion to thank you for your wonderful gift of scientific inspiration. Jan Philipp Solovay has solved major long-standing open problems in the field of mathematical physics and in the process developed the necessary novel tools without ever losing the balance between mathematical beauty and relevance for physics. This has enriched our field. He is a most worthy recipient of the Poincaré Prize 2021 and I look forward to many more breakthroughs and inspiring discussions in his office at the Hosi Oerste Institute in Copenhagen. Congratulations and a deeply felt thank you.
Thank you. This concludes the Henri Poincaré Prize portion of our ceremony, but we are not finished. Um, I would like to call on Silvia Servati, Vice President of the International Association of Mathematical Physics, uh, to announce the winner of the IMP Early Career Award sponsored by Springer. Silvia. Thank you very much. So um, it's a pleasure to announce the 2021 recipient of the IMP Early Career Award. It is awarded to Amor Agarval. And I think he is in the room, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. I'm deeply honored for this award. I would like to uh, thank the committee, um, as well as my family, friends, and teachers for their constant support. Thanks again. And we have a laudatio by Fabio Toninelli from the Technical University of Vienna. It is both a pleasure and a honor to introduce to you Amo Lagarval, who receives today the 2021 IAMP Early Career Award. This prize was attributed to him, I quote, for fundamental contributions to the asymptotic analysis of two-dimensional lattice models, including proving the universality of local correlations for dimer models, characterizing Gibbs measures and their current fluctuations for the stochastic six vertex model and providing a rigorous framework for the tangent method of finding boundaries of frozen, frozen regions in planar ice models. Here is Amol Agarwal's CV in a few lines. He was born in 1993. He was undergraduate student at MIT. In 2016, he received the AMS Morgan Prize for outstanding research by an undergraduate student. Even before starting his PhD thesis, Amol already had four articles published in, lean, in leading combinatorics journals. Amol received his PhD in 2020 from Harvard University, where he was advised by Alexei Borotin from MIT. Just after that, in July 2020, he was appointed as a Clay Research Fellow for a term of five years, and he is presently Assistant Professor at Columbia. Amol's research lies largely in the area between probability theory and combinatorics, known as integrable probability. With strong connections with mathematical physics, in particular integrable systems and out-of-equilibrium statistical mechanics, interacting particle systems and stochastic growth processes. Let me say a few words about just a few among his numerous groundbreaking achievements. The first one, universality for Lozenstein's local statistics to, from 2019. This is perhaps my favorite among Amol's results and it's very easy to formulate. The story starts from dimer models or random tilings in two dimensions. As was observed by Cohn, Larsen and Prop in 98, typical random tilings of large planar domains show phase separation between frozen and rough regions, separated by so-called frozen curves or phase separation lines. Cohn, Kenyon and Prop in 2001 formulated the natural conjecture that the local behavior of such tiling models is always governed by translation invariant Gibbs measures. Over the years, partial progress was achieved via heavy analytic tools, orthogonal polynomials, asymptotics of Castle and metrics, but only for very special domains, polygons of a certain type. In a real tour de force, Amor proves the conjecture for dimers on the hexagonal lattice in arbitrary domains. The proof of this conjecture is extremely, extremely multifaceted. It relies on deep results in the exactly solvable realm integrable probability, borrows some general intuition from the Erdős, Line, Yao and others approach to the universality in random matrices and develops new regularities results in elliptic PDEs. 
From a personal perspective, let me add that I was also thrilled to see that some method I had previously de developed with Benoit Lallier to study mixing properties of blubber dynamics also played some role in this fascinating story. The second work, Arctic Boundaries of the Ice Model on Three Bundled Domains, 2018. For the Dimer model mentioned above, phase separation can be exhibited explicitly. Frozen curves, limit shapes can be computed exactly because the model is determinantal and the surface tension is explicitly computed. Things become much more challenging as soon as models are non-determinantal. And perhaps the most well-known example is the so-called six vertex model. For a square domain with domain wall boundary conditions, phase separation for this model at the ice point was predicted long ago by numerical simulations. A few years ago, physicists Filippo Colomo and Andreas Portiello derived an equation for the, fro for the frozen curve, which they predicted to be the union of explicit algebraic curves, using a non-rigorous approach they called the tangent method. Amel was the first person to make the tangent method rigorous for the square ice model in a family of domains that includes the square with the domain wall boundary. Amel's idea was to apply a formalism of Gibbs line ensembles developed previously in the context of random matrices and random growth models to prove certain stochastic monotonicity for lattice paths arising in square ice. Another amazing work is current fluctuations of the stationary ASEP and six vertex model from 2016. The asymmetric simple exclusion process or ASEP is one dimension, in one dimension is a prototypical interacting particle system that has been studied in the last decades in hundreds of papers, both by physicists and mathematicians. One of the key questions is its space-time fluctuation behavior at stationarity. In 1985, Van Beeren, Kuttner and Spohn predicted anomalous behavior of the stationary ASEP along its characteristic lines. They predicted the height functions fluctuation exponent and the later work of Ferrari and Spohn in 2006 on a simpler model known as TASEP in the same Cardar paris Young universality class predicted the asymptotics large time distribution. It is that distribution that Amol proved for the ASEP. He also proved a similar result for certain translation invariant Gibbs measures of the six vertex model. Again, one of the very few rigorous results known about fluctuations in this fundamental lattice model of statistical physics. I also mention the work Large Genius Asymptotics for Volumes of Strata of a Billion Differentials, 2018. This is very far from my own area of expertise, but what I gather from experts is that Amel's proof of a conjecture of Eskin and Zorich describing large genus asymptotics of the Mazurvich volumes and the Ziegelvich constants is a major advance in geometric topology and dynamical systems. Summarizing, just, uh, just five years after starting his PhD thesis, Amol Agarwal already emerges as one of the most promising mathematical physicists of his generation. He has single-handedly all works mentioned above are authored by him alone, solved several important conjectures in mathematical physics, integrable probability, combinatorics, and well beyond. I'm simply amazed. Congratulations, Amol, and best wishes for a brilliant mathematical career. It is both a pleasure and a honor to Thank you, Fabio. We have another set of awards to announce, and that's the Aryupap Young Scientist Prizes. And for this, I will invite Alain Joie, Vice Chair of C18, the Commission in Mathematical Physics of the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. Alain. Thank you very much, Bruno. So, the Young Scientist Prize in Mathematical Physics is awarded by the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, IUPAP for short, more precisely by its commission C18, every three years and presented traditionally during ICMP. 
So the commission is chaired by Bruno Nachtergel, who asked me to speak on his behalf, which I do with great pleasure. This Young Scientist Prize recognizes original work of outstanding scientific quality in mathematical physics by researchers at a relatively early stage of their careers, that is, within eight years after their PhD. So a selection committee consisting of the officers of the commission, Bruno Nachtergel as chair, Rajesh Kopakumbar as secretary, and myself as vice chair, and two members of C18, Herman Sierra and Jan de Heer, was in charge of proposing three among the 15 nominations of very talented young researchers we received last year from all subfields of mathematical physics. The proposal made by the subcommittee was then approved by the whole commission. And before I, send, uh, I present you the three awardees, let me uh, mention that you will have an opportunity to hear about their work and research during the IUPAP Young, uh, Young Scientist uh, Prize special session, which will take, <coughs> which will take place <coughs> sorry, on Wednesday. So uh, let me give you the first um, awardee. Uh, Young Scientist Prize is awarded to Professor Stephanos Aetakis from University of Toronto. Is that right? So the citation, Stefanos Aretakis is awarded the IUPAP Young Scientist Prize in Mathematical Physics for his influential contributions to the understanding of the dynamics and instability mechanisms of black holes as well as conservation laws in general relativity with a recognized potential for experimental applications. So the awardees will get a certificate and a medal that will be sent directly to them. So please come up so that we can get to see you. And while you do so, let me just uh, uh, tell the audience that Stephanos Aitakis studied mathematics at the University of Patras in Greece and obtained his PhD in mathematics from Cambridge University in 2012 under the supervision of Professor Mihailis Dafermos. He was then a research instructor and an assistant professor at Princeton University. And since 2017, he has been an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. Congratulations again. Um, the Young Scientist Prize is awarded to Professor Chiara Safirio from University of Basel. The citation. Chiara Safirio is awarded the IUPAP Young Scientist Prize in Mathematical Physics for her important contributions towards the mathematical understanding of the dynamics of classical and quantum many-body systems, leading to rigorous derivations of effective evolution equations. Chiara received her PhD degree in mathematics in 2012 uh, under the supervision of Professor Mario Pulvirenti in Rome, and she then worked as a postdoctoral researcher in the Hausdorff Center for Mathematics at the University of Bonn and then at the University of Zurich. Since uh, 2019, she's an assistant professor at the University of Basel. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Finally, the third Young Scientist Prize is awarded to Professor Vincent Tassion from ETH Zurich. Hello. 
Here is the citation. Vincent Tassion is awarded the IUPAP Young Scientist Prize in Mathematical Physics for his key contributions to the understanding of the stochastic properties of representations of classical lattice spin models via probabilistic methods and his analysis of the sharp phase transition of the POTS model. Vincent Tassion studied mostly in Lyon, where he received his PhD from the École Normale Supérieure in 2014, advised by Professor Vincent Beffara. After a postdoc in Geneva, in the group of Professor Hugo Dumilil-Copin, he started to work at ETH Zurich in 2017, where he now holds an associate professor position. Congratulations again. Thank you very much and congratulations again to all the awardees of this morning. Before declaring officially open this Congress, I would like to invite again Benjamin on behalf of the Local Organizing Committee for some announcement related to the on-site attendees. The next one. Okay, so uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, announcements. So the first one, Concern CERN visits, we plan to have a CERN visit. Unfortunately, because of Corona now, it's impossible to have an in-person visit of the CERN. However, CERN is offering a possibility of virtual visits. So we, uh, um, we planned and we scheduled several virtual CERN visits for the next days. Uh, this can be uh, used by online and by on-site uh, participants here in Geneva. Uh, since the number of uh, uh, um, participants to each of these visits is limited, if you want to participate and you are on-site, you should register in the list which are available at the registration desk. If you are an online participant, I think that you should have uh, received a link to register for these visits. Okay, so the, the second announcement concerns posters. So we have uh, 72 posters, if I counted correctly. So they are exposed here on the first floor, so on level one. If you are on site, of course, I invite you to go and uh, see the posters. If you are, if you are online, I, uh, um, you, you can access the posters through the visual platform. There is this uh, posters gallery that you can look at. The next announcement concerns the human rights session, which is going to take place on Friday at uh, lunchtime. And this year, the human rights session is devoted to the issue of uh, gender balance and the equal opportunities. So we'll have a discussion which will take place here close to the registration uh, and desk on, on, the, on, on the side of the, of the hall. So again, for on-site participants, you can attend on-site, but the number of uh, places is limited. So if you want to participate, you should uh, register by inserting your name in the list, which is available at the, at the uh, registration desk. And if you are online, there is no, no restriction and you can participate without uh, registering. Okay, so a couple more announcements now, mostly for on-site on persons. The first one is uh, the mobile uh, phone app, which is available, and I encourage you to uh, download it to your, to your phone. It contains the program, the interactive program, and many other useful information, and you can find instructions to download the app, uh, again, uh, at the registration desk. Uh, corona measures. Um, Right, so first of all, for on-site participants, we are supposed to wear uh, the mask whenever we are uh, in, inside, so in, in this building, unless you are giving a talk. So if you speak or you share, if you're speaking, you can uh, remove the mask, because otherwise we are supposed to wear the mask. Uh, um, another announcement concerning Corona is that we organized a Corona testing booth, which is on level minus one, so it, you have to go downstairs from here, and uh, you can, uh, we will have a booth on today, and then on Thursday and Friday and Saturday from 10 to 2 p.m., from 10 a.m. to 2, to 2 p.m., and you can get uh, either rapid test or PCR test if you need to get back to your country. Maybe you need a test, and we cover one test per participant. Okay, so uh, coffee breaks, so now um, for on-site participants, of course, we will have coffee breaks on the ground floor and on the first floor. 
close to the cafeterias, to the room over there, so you can pick up your food and your drinks, but then to enjoy them, you have to sit down because of uh, corona restrictions again. again. There are tables, you can sit down, otherwise you can get outside, and outside, of course, you can remove a mask and enjoy uh, food and drinks. So if you are on the ground floor, you can go in the area in front of the reception. If you are on the first floor, there is a terrace which we can, which we can use for that. About lunch, if you look on your mobile app, uh, there is a list of restaurants which are close by to the uh, conference centers. There is also going to be some uh, lunch, I guess sandwiches and lunch boxes available at the uh, cafeteria. Of course, uh, you will have to pay for that. Um, um, Right. If you, have, if you got financial help, you will see in your, in your badge that there is an um, orange point. It means that for you the, the, the lunch is uh, paid at the cafeteria here uh, in the center. Right. Now, uh, going on about uh, uh, things to eat. So, unfortunately, because of Corona, we were not able to organize a Congress dinner which is open for all participants, so we had to restrict the number of participants, and uh, we uh, uh, invited uh, some of the participants to the conference dinner, and we gave priority to uh, um, speakers and sessions organizers and uh, <coughs> other participants that helped with the organization of the Congress. We are sorry that we were not able to invite everyone, but uh, in this time is, uh, uh, it was impossible to find a solution. Good, I think I'm almost done. Right, maybe for on-site speakers, please remember to uh, uh, hand in your presentation, your slides, to the speaker's preview room, which is on the first floor, I think, right? Yes, on the first floor, uh, at least two hours before your talk. So if you're talking early in the morning, maybe you should give it uh, the night, the evening before, it would be better. Okay? For online speakers, instead, you will receive a Zoom link in the 24 hours before your talk, and you will, have, we will be able to connect to Zoom and give your talk over, over Zoom. Okay, so maybe uh, a last thing about the rooms. This is the room A, over there you see the room B and C. So today we have all plenary sessions in all these three rooms. Starting tomorrow, plenary talks are going to be in room D, which is upstairs, okay? So today we are here, tomorrow we have plenaries on room D, and we have parallel sessions in room A, in room B and C, or in room well, also in room D, there is some uh, parallel sessions, but there is also room E and F, which are on the second floor. They are a little bit uh, more difficult to find, but we put some arrows so we are confident that everybody will find the rooms, maybe get there with uh, a little bit uh, before time, so you're sure to find the place. Okay, ah, maybe this thing about the, the microphone, right? So you see that we have these nice microphones here, so during the talk, at the end of the talks, if you want to ask questions, so you have to activate your microphone, and then you will be able to ask your question. Don't forget to deactivate it, to turn it off after asking the questions. Be aware that when you speak in the microphone, the camera is going to point on you, so you will also be on, visible on the, on the screen. Okay, I think that's everything, so I, I declare the Congress uh, open, I guess. Thank you very much.